Well, good morning. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning. I would like to take this opportunity um, to introduce uh, the newest uh, faculty member we'll have in grain science collaborating is Dr. Chad Polk. I'm not sure where Chad's sitting this well. There he is. So Dr. Polk will be joining me as a collaborator in the grain science area starting in January. So we're excited to uh, get Chad away from Texas A&M and back up here to Kansas State. And so uh, look forward to a long collaboration with Chad. So um, thank you for coming back. So with that said, um, we're going to talk about some quality assurance stuff. We're not going to talk about any biosecurity. I think you've had enough biosecurity for a while. So what we're going to um, be talking about is a new particle size analysis procedure that we are putting in place here at Kansas State University. And we have a new extension bulletin. It just came hot off the presses. Tuesday is when they were finished. And so I have some out at the front table there. Lois has some if you want to look into more of the details of what we're talking about. But in this new um, Bolton, we are suggesting that we use sieve agitators, which we've always used in the past. We're also going to suggest using a dispersing or flow agent and using a 10 minute sieving time. And I want to explain why this is a little bit different. Because if you look at the official method, the most current method out there right now, it's going to tell you when you look at uh, S319.4 in 2012, that it is going to a 15 minute uh, row tapping time. The method that used 10 minutes was uh, back in method S219.2, almost two methods ago, and not any or not very many people actually switched to the 15 minute one. And so it takes another five minutes. And so we wanted to do some research to find out do we have to do it for the extra five minutes. And so what you're going to see as we go through this we're going to demonstrate why we believe you can use the 10 minutes with the flow agent and the agitators and still get the, uh, the results that you need. So if you look at how we do particle size analysis, for those of you that just send your sample in and wonder what magic happens behind the scenes in the swine lab, we split the sample, we weigh 100 grams, put it on sieves, we road tap it for either 10 or 15 minutes. I put 15 minutes because that's the official method out there right now. And then we weigh back the amount of material on each sieve. And so in doing so, we start with very coarse sieves at the very top. And then as we go down to the bottom, you'll see these very fine sieves. The smallest sieve gets down to particle sizes around 53 microns or so. And what happens, uh, the Rotap machine taps and it shakes it and everything just moves down through there, in theory. So, if you look at what uh, Dr. Goodband um, had put in place for sieve agitators and balls and brushes to help move the material down through there, you can see that we have some rubber balls, we have some brushes, we have some agitators to help move that material all the way down through that sieve stack. And what we're looking at are things like agitators with little plastic knobs on it. We use the ones with brushes and the ones with little rubber balls because as we go from a coarse particle to a fine particle, we want to get those particles moved to the correct sieve. Otherwise, you get an artificially high particle size and when the re reality is it should have been a lower particle size. And so that's what we were after. And so these are the sieve agitators or the little balls on top of the sieves. And then here is the flow agent or dispersing agent that we are recommending that goes into the sample while it goes through the row tap. So what happens, and um, uh, if you don't use these sieve agitators or the uh, dispersing agent, you get buildup on the sieves or in the actual pans. And so we were out doing a project uh, um, uh, Dr. Tokash and I, and I showed him this, and he was shocked to see how much material wasn't actually moving down through the sieves. And so you get this material blinding over the sieves, and it doesn't actually make it down to the pan, and so that gives you a higher particle size than what the reality should be in that case. And so if we look at some work that um, one of my grad students, Julie Calavota, did, she actually took and said, what happens if we take the exact same sample and we sift it with just the agitators? We take the agitators and we add that flow agent um, for 10 minutes or we use it 15 minutes, the current procedure, 
without using any agitators or sieving agent. We add the agitators and then we do 15 minutes with the agitators and that dispersing agent. So what you'll see is the particle size on the exact same sample, if you do it 10 minutes with no uh, flow agent, it goes from like 575 down to 550 microns. And same thing in the 15 minute method. As we continue to add the agitators or the flow agent, the particle size actually decreases. And so the ultimate goal of particle size analysis is to get the lowest particle size possible because that's telling you you got all the material moved down through those sieves. And so if you look at the results, um, 10 minutes with the sieve agitators, 15 minutes with sieve agitators are basically identical. Maybe 14 or 15 microns difference is all there is. And so that's why we believe that 10 minutes with the flow agent will give you the results. Now, the, the key is if you're having it done currently without the sieving agent and you send the exact same sampling, you're going to drop the particle size automatically. So for a feed mill guy, that's great because I can lower your particle size by just changing the method. Now, that's why it's important. The take home message is how is your lab doing it? How are you doing it so that you're comparing apples to apples and not apples to oranges to pears as we may have up here. And so the other thing that will change is your SGW or standard deviation. What you're going to see is that the SGW is going to go through the roof. If you look here, we're at two, I start adding these sieving agents and you're going to go up over two and a half. So when you get results back, you're going to say, wow, something's wrong because all of a sudden you have this high SGW. And the reason that's occurring, if you look at Julie's data, is here's a sample without the sieving agent. We add the sieving agent. Look how much more material ends up in the pan. Almost 10% of the material makes it to the pan because a sieving agent and those agitators help move it all the way down through. Okay, so particle size is going to drop, SGW is going to go up also. So that's two things you're going to see in your results as you uh, change the method or request a different method that you analyze. Okay, so uh, switching gears a little bit, um, we also want to talk, um, we've done some work on mixer uniformity. And so I've always heard over my entire career, the last 30 years, that if you mix feed too long, it actually becomes demixed or it starts actually uh, separating out. And so I had one of my grad students, Marut, go through and we mixed for two minutes up to an hour. So he had to stay there and watch that mixer run for an hour. And if you look at the results, basically there was no difference in the distribution of salt in that feed after mixing for an hour. So once again, I don't believe there's any data to support that we can actually take ingredients and have them try and or, uh, join together in one part of that mixer, okay? The other thing, as Marut started doing the research, we found out that the particle size of the salt has a big uh, influence on the results of your mixer CV. And so when he would take salt, and if it was just unground salt, a fine salt around 350 microns, a medium salt around 460, or a coarse salt around um, about 750 microns, that the CV of that salt, um, or the CV that resulted from that salt was very high in the mixer. And, but if we took that same sample, we ground it finer, then the CV would actually drop. And so the take home message on this is when you're having your analysis done for your mixer, if your CV is very high, you may want to go back and look at, well, what's the particle size of the salt? And the reason it's important is because out of that one ton or two ton or 12 ton batch of feed, you're pulling a 10 gram sample of feed to do the mixer uniformity analysis. And it may be the fact that you just have a poor probability of that particle of salt getting into that 10 gram sample. And so you may want to go back before you go out and buy a brand new mixer, change your mix time, that you actually look at whether it's just the probability of the salt showing up in your sample, okay? And finally, we started looking at um, the application of liquids because there's very little information out there about applying liquids and we are starting to apply more and more liquids to our feeds. 
And in doing so, what we did is we took, instead of using salt in the uh, dry form, we actually put it into a distilled water solution and we were spraying salt onto the feed so that we could actually look at what happens as we apply a liquid. And so what we found was that if you look at the mixing cycle, typically you have a dry mix time where you're mixing your dry ingredients and then you have a wet mix time. Most of the time we do a mixer evaluation only on dry ingredients and we forget that we're adding uh, liquid ingredients and we never test the mixer. And what Marut found was that a lot of times if you have a very short wet mix time of 15 seconds or 30 seconds, your CV of that liquid ingredient was not getting down below our threshold that we like to have below 10%. And so where this comes into play, and this may be something if you work in a feed mill or you have a feed mill, there's two different ways that an automation system will control your liquid addition. Some systems say after the liquid's pumped on, then they run a wet mix time. Other systems will say you have a total time of wet mix and if it takes you basically two minutes to get all your liquids on, then if you have a two minute wet mix time, then you have no time afterwards to um, disperse those wet particles in your mixer. So the take home message would be, go back and check how your automation system is working because you may not have enough wet mix time to actually get all those particles spread throughout the uh, mixing process. And we didn't find a, a big difference if we added a spray tip or without a spray tip, but I would always suggest adding a spray tip um, when you're applying those liquids. So, 